put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. I got this either as a present or I got it on discount, so I did not pay very much money for this and am thus not bitter on account of that. Fear 2 DLC Reborn. You take on the role of one particular replica soldier and Paxton Fettel psychically PMs you with new orders and I shouldn't I shouldn't give away what but you do accomplish something in this yeah by by the end of this you will have accomplished something Paxton Fettel is pretty much the only character in this you know the others vary in how much how many and how detailed the characters are but yeah here it's only him Technically, this doesn't spoil the second game, though, you know, as a DLC, you could, yeah, you, you could play this before the second game, so maybe that's what, it, it didn't really need to spoil the second game either. And there's not really any of the twisted backstory that we get in the other games. It does take place over a short period of time, as the others do, and it's set during the second game. Others have noted it's basically like an interactive movie. You know, you'll have these, very early on, for example, you'll have these airstrikes going on in front of you, and they look okay. And, you know, very clearly you know, pre, pre-programmed. It's not in response to you, like, you know, you go to a place and then they try to bomb that. And, and as, as others have noted, you're basically shooting everything in sight. There are no cool, dramatic, in-engine POV cutscenes. There are times where Alma takes something of an interest in you. Some have said that the plot doesn't really make sense. I do think that there are certain elements of it that don't really make a lot of sense, but you know, on the whole, it basically makes sense. It, be, but yeah, there are definitely issues. The name of the game is lame. This is very, very lame. It's very much a discount version of the full game, somewhat similar to Whistleblower and other DLCs. But Whistleblower does have some that, you know, some stuff that you don't get in the main one that's pretty cool. And this, before the third game, there was this that allowed you to play as the antagonist, similar to opposing for force for Half-Life. And this is actually canon, though you know the the DLC for the first one were you know made not canon. And actually, if you don't play this, when you play the third game, there's a really big question that you're left with for the entire game, and they really could very easily have answered it. Not everyone's going to get a DLC, especially one that gets as deservedly negative a reception as this one. 
and really the, the levels are the only new content. And the, the GUI has been slightly redone and it just makes it hard to read as others have noted. It's somewhat similar to in the original predator to primal hunt. This took me an hour and a half to complete and there were times excuse me where I died from because I basically wasn't quite prepared. Suddenly a situation would shift or as others have noted sometimes you'll die because you're standing in the wrong spot for a cutscene and yeah I could I could have shaved at least 15 minutes not quite half an hour off if I hadn't you know incurred any of that and it would appear that others have incurred more than I did so yeah it might take longer but yeah that's very much too short and this does have a climax, a, not really a boss fight, but a climax, which, you know, really, as of and including the second expansion pack for the first game, each of these has a climax. So they did actually learn from the mistake of the first game and the first expansion pack for the first game. Now, you are... Foxtrot 813, or Fate in Leedspeak, and F it if you read it fast. At first, I was like joking when I noted those, but then I got to think, considering the tone of these games, that's probably entirely intentional. You thus do have a name. And you have a voice, although you'll never say a single interesting thing in the course of this. Really, no one does but Paxton, and his lines are just okay. And actually, you can tell that it's Paxton giving you orders because your objectives will be as vague and ominous. as Not at first, but like after a while, they'll be like, follow the path, complete your, you know, yeah. And this, you know, the, the fact that this is canon does have me wondering, does that mean that every replica soldier can use slow motion since you can in this and you can before Paxton? It's not like Paxton gives you the power. I'm, I'm almost certain it's not that he gives you the power. You just have the power right at the start. I mean, I, I suppose it could help explain why they are so effective against you know others but you would expect them to have used it to counter you know point man or bucket when when they use it and Paxton at times makes for the the voice in your ear you will encounter child Olma Others have noted that this lacks scares. I was surprised by the fact that it doesn't even try. There's there's some eeriness. There's at least three distinct times where it's eerie, and you'll visit this sort of otherworldly place a few times, but that's as close. And, and there's the supernatural enemies and the kind of you know yeah the, the slightly creepy enemies and such. But that doesn't make something scary. Yeah, I, I, they, they just weren't trying. I, I don't know exactly why they made that decision, but they, yeah, they, they actively made the decision not to try or just, you know, by not trying made that, just, yeah. And the... I mean, each of the others does have scares. No matter who you're playing as, no matter what you're able to do, it goes for being scary. Most of the time, this doesn't even really have a scary atmosphere. 
now, as others have noted, there is no secret intel, no upgrades. You know, you just start out with maxed out stats. Like I said, yeah, there's there's absolutely nothing of of like backstory in this. This is a chapter of the overall story that was, you know, taken out of the yeah of of the overall story. That's it. There's no you don't learn anything that you didn't already know in this. It doesn't even really restate things that could have been creepily restated. There are no puzzles. There's only a single turret section and it lasts maybe two minutes. This has the same weapons as the second game, no changes. And you don't really go to different settings and travel in an interesting, you know, in the first one, you'll maybe go by helicopter, and the helicopter will be shot down just as you're exiting. You know, the, the main of the second one, you're taking that tram, and you're being attacked as you're going, and yeah, nothing like that in this. Now, you spend a lot of time on these, like, construction sites and partially completed skyscrapers. And you do start the game with this combat drop. You're in a mech, and it's the only time you use it. You spend less than 10 minutes in it, and you don't fight a single other mech in it. You, you will fight at least one mech over the course of this, but, you know, you want mech-on-mech -mech action. And you're, you're shooting down these helicopters, but since they move so much, and they like to put buildings between you and them, you can't really use rockets to take them out when that was such a fun part of the third game. As you walk around the mech suit, you will walk onto these wooden sections that will then collapse under your weight, and that's how you kind of proceed through it. You know, that's the kind of point of no return, and then you're walking around a new segment. It's kind of dumb. And so one thing that the, the developers did note that they tried, wanted to try to do here, which I do think they succeeded recently in, was make the levels more vertical and open compared to, you know, the, the rest of these games. And, yeah, I, I don't necessarily think that, that was the most interesting thing to do, but it's definitely the, the, you know, I mentioned these, you know, airstrikes. The, the areas are simply not, you know, you, you can't quite see far enough away and yet it be close enough in the other ones. I would say that the airstrike visual, you know, while you are, you know, running around and you're you yourself and, and turning the camera. You know, it's it's the Half-Life kind of cutscene. It it moves independently of you, and you know you have to. You you're the one. It's it's happening while you're in control of the character. Now, some have turned out to point out that the overturned building level is kind of cool, but you spend maybe two minutes in the overturned building section itself. There's this one bit where you are weaponless for just a few seconds. It's it's the classic, you know, oh, you had to jump from an elevator or something, you know. You so you lose your weapons, and you you get another weapon within seconds. It's completely pointless. They might as well have just left you the pistol or something. You do also th there's a sewer level, of course there always is, and you do go to a few places that aren't this construction site and skyscraper kind of thing, but yeah, you, you do spend most of the time in those. And near the end, there's this this kind of section that's really slippery, and you have to be really careful. It's difficult to tell where you can and can't jump. And keep in mind, you're being attacked as you're trying to maneuver this area. And if you, yeah, if you step 
in the wrong place or something, you might slip and fall to your death. And that's really annoying. The you know there are a few areas that do look kind of cool in this, as others have noted, but there's not really anything particularly interesting overall. And one one review don't you you'd get more out of just replaying levels of the second one, yeah. And others have noted that it feels like the the levels here are just ones that were you know, developed for the second game and didn't make the cut. And you never really have a particularly like compelling mission or where you really feel like you're making good progress towards them. By the end of the game you you realize what the whole thing was about and what you've been doing and such and it just feels you don't do anything in the hour and a half that couldn't have been done in just a few minutes, basically. And, yeah, the enemies are the same as in the second one. They behave the same way. And actually, there are these... Yeah, this isn't really a spoiler. There are these enemies called the remnants in the second game that basically they're they're like ghostly and they put out like these these strings that reanim that allow them to reanimate and control several other dead enemies and these take so much fire to to put down and they're really obnoxious and annoying you fight 3 of those in the full game and you fight 2 of them in this that's ridiculous. There should not be that many of them in such a comparatively short. Yeah, that's just that's ridiculous. And yeah, you know, of course they find a way to work in the most frustrating enemy in the whole of the set. Probably the most frustrating enemy of the of the whole series. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise, the links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.